Now, for those of you who have been following this channel for a while, well, since the beginning, will remember that the original reason for starting this channel was I wanted to make that transition from part-time professional photographer to full-time professional photographer. And also, quite a few of you have sent me really kind messages asking where I've been, what I've been up to. Well, I've got some awesome news to share. I am no longer working in retail. I am now doing this full time. See, I got snapped up by a company called Mad Media. They've been great to me. They've been following me since early on. I've known one of the owners of the business for a very long time. And so I now combine with my own work to photography, YouTube, video, all day, <laughs> every day. And it's kind of affected the channel a little bit. Look, plenty of you have noticed that things have been a bit quiet. And another reason for that is partly that the big C bomb that has been affecting everything has made getting gear tricky, but also the channel kind of shifted in a way or evolved into a direction that I didn't want it to go. See, I know you all really love and appreciate reviews. However, there are a lot of time sitting inside, staring at a screen to do the style of reviews I was doing, and it wasn't a direction I wanted to go. I wanted to go somewhere far more me, far more outside, far more action, adventure, creative, far more doing and shooting rather than proving a point, if that makes sense. So from now on, I'm hoping this channel is going to take a bit more of a creative change of direction, far more informative, far more how-to, a little less technical review, but we'll see. It's definitely going to still be in there because that's the kind of stuff I like to do. See, a huge part of my day job is flying drones. I fly drones quite a bit, maybe every week in a commercial sense. I currently own the Mavic Air 2S, and this has been great fun, but like most commercial drones, it doesn't quite have enough excitement. Now the purpose of this series is for those of you that have been flying drones in a commercial sense for quite a while and want to shift into the FPV world and give it a bit of a try, you can follow along with me if you like. Now, as a bit of a benchmark, I have, I reckon, maybe four or five years of drone experience behind me, flying quite a bit, but it's never anything too extreme. I've never, ever done FPV before. Before diving into the FPV world, I downloaded the DJI FPV app. Now, I think this might only be available on iPhone. Um, I made a friend try and get it on Android and couldn't find it, but maybe that's just his phone. And I put in a good maybe 20 hours on that app just on the touch screen, no goggles, no, no joystick, no controller or anything, just getting used to that FPV world. And it's a different kind of world and it was really addictive. I really enjoyed it. But I need to stress again, I've never flown FPV ever before. I've never worn goggles, I've never held the controller. All my experience so far is just in a virtual simulator on an iPhone 12 mini. The quick start guide pretty much says charge everything. If you've had a drone before, follow your nose when it comes to plugging everything in. And then wait, because everything comes flat. Anticlimactic day one, flat batteries. <laughs> There's something about the goggles to my phone, maybe it's the cable. We're playing the simulator through this is definitely shaky, shimmery. It's not fantastic. On the screen with the controller, it's all good and fantastic. But looking through here, so maybe it's the cable, things aren't outstanding. Just like a, a, a jumpy shimmeriness to it. But simulator, the 20 hours of simulator time, feels like it translates pretty well. I'm really not liking this bouncy left stick, so I think we're going to crack into that pretty quickly. I know you can un the stick from YouTube videos I've seen of other people doing it. But there's no instructions. So maybe we've just got to fumble our own way through it. Let's try F1. It's the wrong side. After spending 20 so hours on the DJA flight simulator, I wasn't enjoying having the um, bouncy left hand stick and Without reading any guides on how to do that, you just peel off the back cover. And then with the Allen key that the drone came with, I just tightened up the F2 screw, which is the middle one. I originally loosened it, thinking that would be the way you'd loosen the bounce on it, but you've actually got to tighten it, and then it goes from being like that to flaccid. 
so I don't know what it is. Maybe it's my phone, maybe it's this cable, but my playback of the game, the virtual simulator through the goggles isn't smooth. However, straight into my phone screen it is. So not sure what's causing that, but we'll give it a bit of a practice and we'll see how well that simulator has prepared me for joysticks. Let's go full manual. Whoa! Not the best of starts, <laughs> but it feels pretty, pretty similar. Let's see if I can make a dive. Oh. Okay, it's feeling pretty comfortable pretty quickly. That's a real shame I can't play it through that. I mean, an iPhone 12 isn't exactly old. We're gonna have to work on that and find out what's causing it, but I reckon we go for a flight, a real flight. Okay, first flight done. That was incredible. Like I wasn't, the simulator doesn't do it justice. That, <laughs> that was fast. I, I'm shouting. <laughs> I need to calm down. I feel like I'm loaded with adrenaline. Right. The simulator definitely doesn't do it justice. I didn't go into manual mode. I just did normal and sport and it hoons it. That was, that was a lot of fun. I burnt through that battery, that 10 minutes and what felt like to feel like I'm shaking. <laughs> that, that was really exciting. I definitely need some more batteries and well, this is the easy fix for that. Fly more pack. I actually ordered this at the same time as my drone. In this video, or this part of the video, I'm actually gonna give a little bit of a shout out. This video isn't sponsored by them to Ferntech. Now, Ferntech are DJI in New Zealand. They are pretty awesome to deal with. And this arrived in a separate packaging and it arrived at work and one of my coworkers got it and put it aside. And I didn't know that. And I called up Ferntech and said, hey guys, where's my fly more kit? Makes for batteries and charger. And they said, oh, it's been delivered. And I thought it wasn't. And I was maybe a little bit rude, but they were not. They were awesome. They've been awesome every time I've dealt with them. But I think a huge testament to how good a company is is how good they are when they stuff up, or in this case, when I stuffed up. They've never stuffed up with me, but kudos Ferntech. You guys are GCs, I appreciate it. Let's get some more batteries charged and get more flight time in. That was, that was addictive. I, I could do with some more of that. <laughs> As far as turning off the springy controller straight away, if you've got a bit of simulator time, I would heavily recommend it. It felt very comfortable in all modes very quickly and feels like it's a nice transition from when I'm in manual mode, just like, just like in the simulator. I'm not there yet, but I would undo that padding, loosen up that screw straight away. So even in normal modes, get that left hand stick or whatever stick you're using for your height flappy very quickly. Man, I am buzzing. I cannot wait for day three. shouldn't have opened that. So of course on the weekend I get my drone a cyclone hits and it really puts a big dent in FPV plans. So what I thought I'd do instead today is I've kind of been rushing along a little bit so we'll make a list, we'll work through it and we'll do everything we possibly can with an FPV drone when we can't fly it. Find out how to correctly do manual. My filming so far, that was just in a, the, whatever the, the first 
loaded settings were for the camera straight out of the box. So I need to actually get into the DJI Fly app and set my camera up. I also did a little bit of research about why the DJI Flight Simulator was so glitchy through the goggles. And it turns out it's just a problem with the app on that particular level I was testing with. So I can still fly on, say, the soccer field or the car park, just not in that factory area. So one thing I've actually been struggling with a little bit is keeping a consistent altitude when flying. It's definitely a lot easier in person, but in the app it's quite a bit harder to keep that consistency. So I think we're gonna get in some more flight sim practice with the goggles and with this joystick. I also need to take a thumbnail. <laughs> I've got a cool idea for a thumbnail for this video. That's not required. But for the practice with the simulator, I've got a cool like little starting program I went through when I was learning to use the simulator. So I think that'll work out pretty well and we'll explain more of that when we get to it. But for now, let's correctly find out how to fly in manual. The one thing I saw in a video was when I originally did this, I I only loosened one screw, and apparently you're meant to loosen or tighten both. So we'll tighten up F1, F2 is as tight as it goes. All right, tightening F1 did not make sense. That made it sticky, which is cool to have that setting. So loosening F2 makes this not bounce back into place. Sorry, tightening F2 makes this not bounce back into place. Tightening F1 changes the resistance and how quickly it, it falls. So I want it a bit looser than that. You can see that's quite loose. I think I want it a little tighter than that. So that feels pretty nice. Like it doesn't drop down except for when it's right at the top. So that's the stick sorted correctly. Next up. Oh, I love that sound. Right. So it turns out, I assume there's a manual for this I haven't seen. Through clicking in on the joystick button and moving around, you can access all menu and camera options. So we'll also set up camera correctly and find out how to do that full manual. So it turns out as you try and change this switch here to manual, it actually gives you a little bit of a guide of what to tighten in there. Really fumbling my way through this. Hopefully I've done that right. I've now got normal, normal, and manual. I'm gonna assume I don't, because normal comes up red and sport comes up red, I'm gonna assume that's something to do with being inside and having no GPS coverage, but find out how to quickly do manual, done. There's a couple of options in there you gotta check. I just had to go into a YouTube video, find out how to do it. You've got to turn off, turn off the altitude limit. You've got to set that bottom button there to be full manual, not just another sport mode. And you've got to loosen and tighten the sticks so this is correct. I've just changed to the Cinelog. I don't have any ND filters for it yet, so I'm still keeping things in an auto for now. But I've been, the camera quality is better than I was expecting. Reviewers really ran down the camera quality from it and I found it pleasable. I'm just gonna to learn to fly to keep my props out of the shot. We need to do some sim practice. Let's get this off. So I've already done the basic little tutorial part with the goggles on and the sticks to have a little bit of a practice. Now what I'm gonna do now is gonna jump into the soccer field and progress exactly like how I progressed when I was just flying on the sim, just using the touchscreen buttons on the phone. But this time with joystick. So first of all, I'm starting out in normal mode with my camera set to zero degrees pitch. Should be pretty straightforward. Oh man, I forget how basic normal mode is. I'm shooting the corners a little bit. Normal mode piece of cake, that was no worries at all. How'd we do? Nowhere near my best time, but I got nearly 34 seconds of normal mode. First flight with joysticks on the soccer field, piece of cake. Let's go try again, but this time we're flicking over to sport mode. Whoa, I overshot that a lot. Second last corner, definitely a noticeable difference in speed. Get low, last corner around into the finish line. <laughs> Crashed at the finish on sport mode, but still got it done in 25 seconds, two stars. This is all pretty similar to me, and I'm really feeling that that time in the simulators helped make this quite doable. Let's go try again. This is where things are gonna get a bit trickier. Flick it over to manual. Now, with manual, 
there are what I found quite a nice few ways to progress through this. You're not just in manual. What I did with the simulator, which I'm not sure how to do the controller just yet, is you start off in the beginner mode as far as the sensitivity goes. When fiddling with it through the goggles before, I couldn't find sensitivity presets. I could definitely change the sensitivity settings, but not presets. So what I'm doing now is just on the default sensitivity, however it was. But you want to start your camera out with, I went for about 10% to start with. And we'll try and get around, not as fast as we can, we're just going to try and get around in manual. And you can see we're looking down a little bit and crashed. Not a good start. I'm actually finding it a bit tricky at 10 degrees. You can definitely see that change to manual even with joysticks. When I've got pretty good speed times on this, it's still harder. Also being on the phone instead of the screen doesn't help. Finished. Horrific time frame. But as you progress, especially if you're starting with just the simulator, I would slowly increase that camera angle to increase your speed and then once you've got real comfortable, change that camera angle back to like a 10 or 20 degrees and then crank that sensitivity up to more like a, the intermediate or the advanced settings. Let's go try again, but this time I'm cranking that camera angle up to about 25. Yeah, for me that definitely feels quite a bit more comfortable, like I'm going forward. Bounce off the post. <laughs> going forward and seeing where I'm going for like a comfortable speed for me. Oh, and I say that and blow past the checkpoint. Final corner, through the finish, come on, come on. Nearly 30 seconds, but we can definitely do a lot better than that. Let's go try again. Let's crank that camera angle up to 43. Oh, blew past the first corner and crashed. Crashed again. Joysticks is noticeably different than the sim. I like it. Still not a great run, but what I'm going to do now is get in some reps with this, see if we can get down to under 20 seconds with the joysticks. Just I picked 20 seconds because that was my, near my worst time for me on just the sim in this area as far as my top five times go. So we're going to do some reps, see how we go. Tip number two, tip number three, tip number four. Under 30 seconds, still horrific. Restart. Final corner. Let's go, 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 go. Now I normally find as soon as I start pushing it that bit harder, I start crashing more. Well, I think a real good guide is actually just slow down, get through. Like you can see right then, I completely overshot a corner. No, we're not doing it this time. Restart. All right, don't go too fast. Try again. Try again. Try again. 22 seconds. That wasn't great. <laughs> nah, blow it. Okay, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to crank that camera up a bit more. Oh, 45 is quite a bit. Try again. Joysticks is still taking some adjusting to. Another restart. We can do this. Bounce off the checkpoint. 21. We can get under this 20 seconds. Right. Try and get under this 20 second challenge. I'm going to have to start getting a little bit reckless. Try again. Big part of repetitively trying this is just trying to get some reps in with sticks on manual mode. Normally I should be doing this with goggles on, too low, crashed out. Hmm, okay, I think I'm going to have to crank that camera angle up. I've really set myself up a challenge here. 58 degrees, let's just be reckless. Go. Feeling fast. Second. Oh, 20. I think that was just over 20 seconds. <laughs> I said under 20. We're getting closer. Right. <laughs> Try again. Tilt forward heaps. Go. Good speed. Really struggling with the corners coming from touchscreen cornering to joystick cornering, but that's why we're doing the reps. That ground, eh? Keeps getting in my way. Right. Same right like this is a final attempt, but we're not stopping until we get this. And uh, second last corner, early turn, speed into the finish, 22 seconds. Nowhere near. 20.041. <laughs> Try again. Less talking, more focus. I want to get this done. Come on, we can crack this 20 seconds. That was horrific, did I do it? 19.234, that was a messy run, <laughs> oh man. Finally got it. I'm sure I'll have somewhere on the screen here how many attempts that took, because I lost track, that took a lot. We're gonna give a break from this for now, because that was a lot of, it felt like a lot of sim time, and tomorrow we'll try it again, 
but through goggles rather than through screen. Whew! That took a bit, that took a bit. So today didn't start out great. It is day one after Cyclone Dovey has just passed through where I live, and it's still pretty windy outside. It's sunny, it's dry, but it's pretty windy. But I'm really clean, keen for some more flight time. So chucked in a battery, flew around in the wind a little bit just to see what it was like in like normal on sport mode. Felt pretty good, so I decided to flick it over to manual and have my first ever manual flight. Wasn't planning to go high, just planned to get a little bit of a feel for it. I took off, straight away my drone went forward, caught in some grass and crashed, and I've been to prop, but thankfully they come with spares. But not a very good first experience for manual flying. And today's little bit of experience, and I plan to do a lot more today, taught me a few things. I wrote them down. Number one. If you're practicing a lot in the simulator to start with, there are a lot of things the simulator really doesn't teach you, prepare you for. And that is, the first one is wind drift, floating there. As soon as you're out of the GPS enabled mode, especially when I was flying around in manual, the wind when going certain directions would really blow me off course. And I didn't feel that comfortable flying in manual. And I'm putting that down a little bit to that wind drift. Next up is transmission strength. Now, in the game you can kind of fly, when the simulator you can fly anywhere and it feels great the whole time. And the drone flies phenomenally kind of for a really unpractically <laughs> long range. But what doesn't handle range and obstacles well is the tra transmission strength back to your goggles. As I get behind trees, behind buildings, that vision that's coming back to you definitely gets real pixelated and slow and glitchy and it doesn't work well. The simulator really didn't prepare me as as well as I'd hoped for that. Well, actually, it doesn't prepare you at all, but I was surprised at how limited in range that transmission strength is. But when it's good, it's phenomenal. The simulator doesn't do the speed justice, especially in manual. Man, it's it's like hundreds of meters in a second kind of thing. It's just, I'm trying to, what I thought would be a big enough area to fly around in to start with, and it's just a lot of lack of experience at the moment, manual, is really really fast. After crashing within the first 10 seconds of being in manual I'd really encourage taking off in normal or sport mode and then when you're mid-air like above a lot of obstacles flick it over to manual then and ask you to like make sure your joysticks are in the like a safe spot and then you can carry on and for me that felt pretty safe and just learning where that those little panic buttons or flicking back to normal or sport mode when you're feeling nervous doing either one of them, but getting further away from the ground. I wouldn't have crashed within 10 seconds if I'd had that little bit more height rather than being so close to the ground and just plowing into a bit of a grass bank. Next up is battery life. I have been caught out, like it can drop pretty quick. And if you're a little bit of a distance away and the battery kicks in or if you're flying underneath something, I'm, I've been nervous about it doing automatic return to home when I'm flying in or around or under or close to something and it's just pausing, because it's definitely not phenomenal. In the simulator, you just fly forever, as long as you can handle it. Out in the real world, I'm getting that eight to 10 minutes. And so that, once again, battery life doesn't prepare you. But that's gonna end it for this video. I'm gonna go out and do a lot more flight practice. I've got three fully charged batteries there and I'm real excited to get more practice in even though it's still quite windy. I'll leave you with some of my best footage if I can get from my first week. If you'd like to see more of this, Please feel free to like, share, subscribe. If you've got any pointers or constructive feedback, leave them down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed following along. There's got to be more like this to come because I'm really enjoying doing this kind of style of video. But until next time, guys, we'll catch you next time. I grew up in a place where they told you what to chase. Told you how to run the race. Every move was on the page, but I didn't like their way. Had to fight and misbehave Had to find a way to change Had to leave to find my way Caught up in a daydream I be in my mind up here almost daily It's how I pass time, no opinions safely It's how I understand what I want in this place See, cause everybody wanna tell you bad things What could go wrong, what fame brings But success is a finicky thing And if you ain't sure, no, it'll never be I don't wanna let myself down myself